Kitco Mining's special coverage of the CIM Convention and Expo is brought to you by CSE, the Canadian Securities Exchange. Welcome to Kitco Mining. I'm Niels Christensen, and we're continuing our coverage from the CIM Convention and Expo. Joining me today to talk about uh, the ESG side of mining, especially how we manage our tailings, is Stuart Muir, business development of Tersa Earth. Um, Stuart. Thanks, Niels. Welcome to the show. It's not, it's not the, the glamorous side of the mining sector, but it probably is the most important. I mean, you cannot build a mine nowadays without ESG considerations. You know, you can't, unless people know what's happening with the tailings, how you're going to manage that, a mine will never get built in this day and age anymore. Yeah, that's so true. And you look at all of the areas that need to be addressed. There are considerations here when it comes to tailings from a government perspective, regulatory permitting, from a professional perspective, whether it's designers, engineers, from an investor perspective who are seeking ESG and expect the best environmental solutions for every problem that will, will be encountered. And for mine operators, they want the most high performing mines and the most profitable mines for their businesses. So how does, what is Tersa Earth doing with with tailings, how how are you guys impacting this this important aspect of the mining sector? Yes, Tersa Earth Innovations is a startup based in Burnaby, British Columbia. It comes out of the work done at the University of British Columbia by Dr. Vikramaditya Yadav, who is a pioneer in micro biological treatments, including in the oil sands. His earlier company, Metabolic, was acquired uh, by. Um, a specialized company in that space, and now he's been free to pursue Tersa, which, which is a different technology, different patents, and this work has been going on since 2016 to develop the, the underlying ideas and technology, and it's been on the path to commercialization for the last two years. So we are seeking to get into the field for our field trials to uh, move very quickly to commercialization. And I can give you some more background on you know, what it does. Well, yeah, so basically, uh, bio, basically it's organisms that go into the, the I guess, the, the, the soil or the rock, and they actually, like they themselves, filter out, from what I understand, from they filter out the, the minerals that you guys want. I mean, is that, is that basically how it works? It, it is, it's, it, it's one of the things that I've, I've been paying more attention to um, because yeah, it, it's a new way to, to resource extraction. It's a new way, but in some ways it's the most ancient of ways because what we're pursuing is a nature-based process that is being supersized through the methods that we have thanks to relatively recent breakthroughs in technology. And that's really the enabler of this, the fact that things are getting cheaper and faster in order to scale up. And a lot of people, old hands in mining, will say, oh, microbes, bugs, they've been around forever. That's true, they have been around, you know, the 60s, the 70s, sure. And, and that's worthy work on the pathway to where we are today. But where we, are, where we are today, if you think of things like AI that are, for a lot of people, suddenly coming as if from nowhere to revolutionize or change how they work, um, I, I think there's other breakthrough technologies too that come from similar empowered technologies that allow uh, problems to be broken down more quickly. And when you can uh, go back to the source of a problem, understand the origin of, you know, why is it that microorganisms create acid rock drainage? What are the ways that we can engineer the solution based on things that are naturally occurring, but, but boost them? So we're using fuel uh, reactors. We're using uh, uh, biological uh, reactors to uh, do the work to uh, change the the uh, status of uh, tailings wastewater in a flow-based process. So we extract the precious metals that are there. There is so much value left behind from mining. Of course, it depends on the particular tailings water and, and situation. So are you, right now, are you looking at going back to like uh, legacy projects and going in their tailings or do you want to, can, can you do that? Or is it now about uh, making sure we don't have tailings anymore? Yes, I, I think the, the North Star of this over the long term, which could be many decades into the future, is that we don't want to be creating these vast reservoirs of water that are there forever, that create engineering problems, that create risks for human populations, that are environmental hazards in general. Who, who wants that? And certainly not governments and regulators that are going to be pressing for that to change. So I think over the long term, in the shorter term, what we're hearing from industry, because uh, you know we are... Uh, new in the space and we are innovating a new space. So 
in listening to industry's needs, we are hearing from uh, existing mine operators that are saying, look, we have this particular need. We would like to consider this for our operating mine. But we're also hearing from new mines being permitted. And that speaks to the ESG and the mines of the future. You know, in Canada, depending on who you listen to, it's 13 to 25 years for a mine to be permitted. And right now, at the pace of growth of the needs for uh, energy metals in the world and critical minerals, um, we're just not going to be able to serve that. So we need more innovative ways. And I think the, the appetite for industry to be able to reduce its costs, to decarbonize, to uh, treat the environment better, to reduce the liability costs for ongoing mine operations is great. But then where you started, Niels, you mentioned legacy um, issues or the burdens that many governments face because they are the ones often in yeah. Canada that are dealing with these century long uh, consequences. And it's very expensive to everybody and who wants that? So that's certainly an area of interest. And I think the, you know, uh, the number one greatest excitement we're hearing is from uh, today's mining companies that are looking for solutions today for the problems of today. And you know that's really why, why I'm here at CIM, connecting with a lot of people. There's a lot of interest in what we're doing. How much value is in tailings, do you think? Like how much, like, I guess, uh, what, I think 90% recovery rate is, is considered exceptional for a company. So like, is there, like, do, do the tailings have 10% of, you know, our value. There's a lot of different ways that I've seen experts come at it. One of them is that in Canada, and I believe this is the Geological Survey of Canada, there's $10 billion a year worth of metals left in tailings water that could theoretically be extracted, and we believe actually can be extracted from water. Um, there, but there's other estimates too. I've seen from Australia, particular numbers on different resources, but I, I think there's no question that it's a vast amount. <laughs> um, and now is this, is the technology applicable across the spectrum or is it just, you know, gold? Can it work with, with copper? Can it work with nickel, zinc? You know, like I'm just thinking of, of you know, all of the sort of the, 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 tagus, the, the tailings that we get, you know, copper. Um, yes, copper is high on the list as is gold, silver, um, platinum. There are um, many metals that we believe uh, we, can, we can touch, selenium. Um, arsenic. There are ones that just will not have the characteristics and we are working through that. So our lab in Burnaby is uh, accepting samples from the companies that we're initially working with to determine the fit there because it's all a custom solution that we tailor for the particular characteristics of, of the mining water. So if you come in, if, if Tersa Earth comes into a project, um, does that mean like, the, are you able to, to clean up the tailings then like is that like or is there still like legacy maintenance that will have to go on or you know does it basically return it to nature i'm just sort of wondering you know sort of the 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 how the process that's involved like what what's the end result you know does that does that get to be sort of pristine nature again yes well we we wish to return the water that flows through our process to the natural environment in that area we wish to extract the metals that have the value in there and to do so using uh, sites that do not require significant amounts of power because they are self-powered mm -hmm. because we are working with electrogenic microbes that carry their own charge which is one of the beautiful things about it why we call it a nature-based process so it doesn't require the very high costly input of electricity which has to be generated somehow often by diesel so we literally are decarbonizing the cleanup process by doing this um, in terms of the scale of a particular um, installation of Tursa technology, that's going to depend on a number of factors. Uh, we certainly are gaming out the concept of 100% of the water flow from a mine being processed in a, a new situation. So uh, when it comes to actual field trials and proving out how that's going to apply to different situations. I think we'll be comparing our vision to what different realities of you know, particular clients and customers of ours are dictating to us. So uh, obviously we're talking about tailings, but, and uh, you know, we, we talked about uh, future minds and stuff. So do you see, do you see sort of microbiology as the, uh, an extraction method? You know, is, is, this, is this going to be the bar to reach? Yeah, think of this word, biomining. 
because that's what we're doing. We're using bio biological processes to mine the water, to get the valuable metals, just like humanity has done for a large part of its existence. Um, I think a, a transition in how we get the metals we need for civilization will include biomining. And the innovation required to do that efficiently, which has escaped us in the past, is now upon us because of innovations that have occurred. We have those innovations now. We have four patents for Tursa Earth. It comes out of one of the most lively, interesting um, chemical engineering departments, I think, in the country at the University of British Columbia that Professor Yadav has been uh, working on at the Biofoundry. That's the name of his project there. And we've been able to license this technology to bring it to commercial use. I guess it, it helps that there is a success story in the in the oil uh, in the oil industry. Yes, yes. A metabolic was evolved to deal with naphthenic acids, which, uh, for those paying attention to some of the finer points of oil sands, is one of the gnarlier problems that they must deal with in terms of managing wastewater there. So, um, th this is, I think, across the board. I'll, I'll tell you, Professor Yadav has also worked on the Moderna COVID vaccine because that too is cutting edge. There are similarities in the thought process. So I think even though we may think of mining as being something performed on a vast scale with great large machines and in ways we all have, have many vivid uh, mental Im images of that, I think there's also a future, a parallel future to that that is not, not competing necessarily with that, but supplementing that for the increased demands for ESG friendly uh, metals, low carbon metals to be developed. We can, we can do this too. So uh, obviously, you're, 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 is it? Are you still proof of concept? Then, like, what? I guess, what's next for Tursa Earth? Yes, the 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 science of this is is uh, proven and and is being scaled to the point of the field trials that we are entering into in 2023. Um, if anyone who is watching this from a mining company, or engineering firm, or anyone like that wants to contact us to talk about how they could be involved. We're certainly open to those conversations, but we do have a number of advanced relationships in the pipeline to be able to get into the field, which will then lead by 2025 to commercialization. So we're really two years away from having our first commercial installation of, of Tursa technology. Wow, I, well, I wish you luck. I think it's, it's bio mining is, is very exciting. And I think anything that deals with tailings it's just it's that's the, that's sort of the boogeyman i think that haunts the mining sector and anything that we can do to sort of to, to deal with that um is definitely a step in the right direction yeah i think it's given mining a black eye when you see these incidents that uh, take the headlines for a long time and and it, it's no joke when there's a great loss of life as in some cases or environmental damage that is not a sustainable story for the mining industry and it will become harder not just as we have the issue of um, lower uh, amounts of, of metals present in the deposits that are now being mined today, but also this other problem of social license in ESG. So I think uh, there's a very appealing story in saying we have a natural process that works. It's low energy, it's decarbonized, it's cleaning up the water in a natural way. It's also delivering value for the things that people need. And so we, we don't have to give up the way that we live, where health is becoming um, a universal promise of every country for uh, even the ones that have been living on a dollar a day to this day are able to see themselves living a healthier, more affluent way of life. Um, how will that be sustainable? This is one of the ways that it becomes sustainable and then we can have the uplift of, of all people. Mm -hmm. um, Stuart, thank you very much for coming on the show and talking about, uh, about this in exciting new uh, era in uh, in mining. Thanks, Neil. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for watching Kitco Mining. Stay tuned for more coverage from the CIM conference and expo. If you like what you see, remember to hit the subscribe button down below. Kitco Mining's special coverage of the CIM convention and expo is brought to you by CSE, the Canadian Securities Exchange.